The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to the Lord. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat anything without purifying themselves. And there were many other things that they had traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and the scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand, nothing that enters one from outside can defile the person. But the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So one of my side roles on campus uh, started recently last year is I've been chaplaining for a couple teams, including cross country. So there's a lot of cross country people here, notice. So, um, and I had the opportunity to go to their meet yesterday in Tyrone. And in fact, uh, good job to all of you who participated, especially those who made the top 10, so, and everyone else. And so it was a good experience for me. And one thing that I tried to do, since I had to drive all the way out to Tyrone, I try to mix up different trips together when I have to travel. That way it's, you know, I can kind of make a day out of it. I like to try to get out of Loretta a little bit every now and then. And so I was in normal clothing and I thought, you know, well, I'll bring my laptop with me and, you know, it's halfway on the way to State College, so I went to Penn State, I'm an alumni, like to visit every now and then, and I'll just go spend the afternoon, Penn State, you know, walk around or work on my laptop a little bit just to kind of see it, get out a little bit, and come back in time to have dinner with the Friars. So I go out there and, you know, amidst the lightning storms and everything else that are happening in the, light, in the mountains, I was able to make it there, and once I'm able to park, and pay for parking and all this stuff, I have one hour and a half to park and do whatever, start walking around, my backpack on and my laptop, looking for a place to go, and I start noticing there's a lot of students walking around. Now, it's a Saturday afternoon, I figured, you know, might be a little busy, and I'm starting to see a lot of white t-shirts with writing on them, so I'm trying to look very closely. I said, what, what are these t-shirts saying that I'm seeing over and over again? I said, back to, back to school, back to school, back to school bar crawl. Oh, lovely. I picked a good day to come to State College, jeez. So, I'm looking around, finding the one place that doesn't have some huge line and a bunch of college students, not kids, all being really loud with these white t-shirts on, and I find one place, go in there, and it's a place I, I like, it's a little nicer than for old people like me, and I go in and they say, yeah, we're not letting anyone in with a t-shirt on. I said, oh, great, good. So I sat down and sat next to the window so I got to watch everybody walk by. So got my Penn State experience without having to deal with all the issues. So. Doing my little work on my laptop, once I'm bored, I go back home, spend time with the friars. But I was thinking, and I reflect on this pretty regularly, weekends can be a real spiritual battle at a lot of college campuses, maybe even our own, and a lot of places. And I think a lot of you experience it, 
And I think even the friars, we can feel it in our prayer lives. And I know I do. We think about my own time when I was at Penn State, and I see that. And I was a pretty good student overall. And you think about the bar crawls and the fun party scene and everything, and it sounds like a fun time, but I also have the other memories as well. I remember the tears uh, late at night. I remember the hurt relationships. I remember the superficiality. And I remember the addictions, the bizarre addictions, to alcohol, sex, drugs that don't magically end at graduation. So maybe it's not so fun after all to live a life like that. And maybe we're called to something so much more. And maybe all many of you already realize this, and which is why you're here. But our readings today remind us that we're called to something so much more, something so much greater, found in Jesus Christ. Our rule book of morals, as we feel like sometimes in our religion, in our Catholic faith especially, it seems like just a list of like, okay, don't do this, don't do that. But God is giving us a guidebook to something so much greater. And he's telling us a reality about who we are and what we're made for. Our gospel reading today in Mark, Jesus gives all of the Jewish people a reality check. What was happening at that time where you had these religious leaders called the Pharisees, and you also had the scribes and other ones who were very, very knowledgeable about the Jewish law and the law of Moses to the point where they held it over top of others. And they started taking it steps further than it needed to go. So they say, okay, there's this differentiation between clean and unclean, which was meant for liturgy and was meant to give a lesson to the people. But they started taking this a step further. They say, okay, if it's good to be clean, then make sure we wash our hands before everything, absolutely everything. And then let's take it a step further. You're sinning and breaking the law or the tradition if you don't wash your hands, all this stuff. And it got to the point where it's crazy. And the people were just confused. And it was a way for the Pharisees and religious leaders to take these made up traditions or these, you know, quote unquote, good traditions and use them as law to hold other people down. And so Jesus tells them, well said, you hypocrites. Because the things that really defile, the things that make you unclean, are not what you do with your hands, washing your hands before a meal. Because you have completely forgot what truly makes you unclean. Because meanwhile, behind the scenes, a lot of these Pharisees were doing some pretty awful things. And he says, from within, our hearts are what defile. And we say defile. Jesus is not saying, you little wretched sinners, because you do all these little things. No, Jesus is giving us a reality check that we're made for so much more. That these things, this list of things that he gives us, defile us. They hurt us. They bring us pain, misery, and they separate us from God and they separate us from what God truly calls us to be, what he's made us for. And he says, evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, and murder can also include hating from one's heart, deceit, licentiousness, or using sex in a way that God has not intended, brings hurt and pain, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, or pride, which can kill us from within, folly, foolishness. All these things come from within and they defile. God is trying to guide us. He's telling us something that we can fall into without even necessarily even realizing it because we're human. And he's telling us, no, these things hurt you. Don't do them. And if you do, come straight back to me. I forgive you. And that's why we have confession. And that's why we have the Eucharist. Our first reading today is from the book of Deuteronomy. It's the fifth book of the Bible. And Moses, it's his teaching of Moses to the people, a new nation coming out of Egypt to live on their own, to stand on their own feet. 
And they're told, what great nation is, has a God as good as our God when we call upon him? What great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as the whole law which I am setting before you today? What God is as good as our God who tells us how to live, who gives us a law, who shows us himself? If we look at the Jewish law of Moses, we see all these rules and we think, why are they here? It's because God is trying to guide his people. The rules of liturgy are meant to tell them what heaven is like. The rules of morals is to tell them what they've made for. Clean versus unclean, recognizing that God is holy and he's called us to be holy. They took the law as a guide. They took the law as a way of life because they knew it was their God who was truly revealing himself to them. And then in our second reading today from St. James, religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Our God calls us to so much more. Our God calls us to live life to the fullest, but most importantly, the life in the fullest with him. And when we do these things that Jesus lists to us, it separates us from him. But nothing can separate us from the love of God, who will always come back to us if we open up ourselves to him. So today, and as we move forward with this upcoming year, let's think to ourselves, what is holding me back? What's holding me back from that fullest of relationship with God? What's holding me back from the fullness of what God has called me to live? Whatever it is, it could be something simple. It could be something as simple as time. Whatever it is, bring it to God. Because Jesus loves us, every single one of you. And the question he loves the most, and that'll answer, is God, what do you want of me to be in greater relationship with you? As we move forward, let's reflect on that. Because God will never forget, never abandon, and will always give the guidance to bring you closer to him.